Home Affairs Minister Arun Motswali has tabled the department's budget vote. Various measures have been introduced to deal with long queues at Home Affairs offices. These include opening offices and shopping malls, revamping IT systems and looking at a complete overhaul of the immigration system. For more on this, I am joined by the Deputy Minister of Home Affairs in Jabulu Nzuza. He joins us now virtually. DM, thank you very much for your time here uh, on all angles. Of course, yesterday was quite an important day, especially looking at uh, the kind of budget that the Home Affairs Department needs not only to shorten queues but also to fight corruption. Just tell me more about the CETA initiative to help you uh, with the whole system is offline problem. Yeah, good day, Masako, and good day to all the viewers at home. We have uh, tabled the 9.4 billion budget, which is going to be spread across all units of the department, civics, immigration, uh, as well as administration and other areas. We are also going to be dealing with the issue of systems revamp, which will be able to deal with uh, the availability of systems and network, in, and uh, as well as network uh, architecture. What we had indicated previously is that we we're giving getting experts from the banks because you know the network architecture of the banking system is almost similar to the one that home affairs needs in order to save its, uh, its customers better and that is why we then sourced about eight experts from the banking sector whom we are working with together with CETA to then deal with the issues that we are facing in terms of network architecture so that our network availability can improve such that we are able to service our customers much better but beyond that we are also making Making other uh, technological advancements like the kiosks that we are going to be buying this year, which will allow people not to just uh, get our services by going to a physical home affairs mm -hmm. offices, but they will use this kiosk sort of to get uh, self-service in the area of application of passports and other documents that can also be printed by the very same kiosk. So those are some of the technological uh, advancements that we're introducing. I did test the system myself, DM, actually, and uh, it does work quite well in terms of uh, trying to get an appointment, etc. Uh, but how will it then work from there? Is it uh, basically almost the same as what the transport department introduced with, for instance, renewing your license? Well, I, I will not uh, speak to details about the transport department one. Of course. But what we are doing is that we have actually piloted it in 25 offices already, and it mm. is working very well. What happens is that you log into the system, you book an appointment, we give you when you can come into the office, and then when you come into the office, we are already expecting that you will come, and we already know what kind of a service that you are coming for. What we look to do with that is that in the long term, for services that are not urgent. Let's make an example. If you need a smart ID card that you will not get on the spot, but it has a turnaround time of about a week and a half or so, we'll then go and book an appointment system. So for all of those who want to make them compulsory that you book an appointment because it's not urgent. But for those that are urgent, like death certificates, your birth certificate, your mm -hmm. TIC, will then welcome in uh, customers who will be working in. Now, what does this do for us? It allows us to be able to uh, control the queues. When you come to the office, you are guaranteed that you are going to get service because we have made a special arrangement for you. And it means you are not going to leave your area and go to our office only to find that there will be long queues and you will not be serviced. So it's quite a, a system that will go a long way. We're looking at having it in 43 offices by 30 June, 120 offices by 31 October, and then uh, we'll then slowly introduce it in the, into the other offices. Mm -hmm. that, that, that actually will uh, assist a lot in terms of the queues that people find themselves in uh, when, it, uh, when, when it comes to going to home affairs offices. Uh, speak to me about uh, what you had to clarify yesterday uh, while this budget vote was being presented. Uh, you spoke about some of the assistance that was offered to the community of uh, KZN that was affected by the floods. Uh, break it down for us. What exactly did home affairs, was home affairs able to do to assist those communities? Yes, we always in, uh, we always intervene when there are instances of disaster. We've done so in Cape Town in an instance where there were fires. We had also done so in KZN in one of the settlements there when there was a fire. Again, this time around, when there was a disaster, obviously people lose their enabling documents, which means they can't be able to access social relief and so on. So we had to jump in quite quickly. The first thing that we did was to take a decision that all those who are affected by the disaster, they will be getting their 
their services for free, which means if you lost your smart ID card, we'll do it for, for you for free. If there is a lost bed certificate, we'll do it for free. We then dispatched nine mobile units to visit about 41 sites already that we have done. We have interacted about 2,225 of the victims who lost their documents, and we had a turnaround time of about a week because we had to expedite them getting their documents. We then used the very same mobile units to then issue out those particular documents. I remember at some point we were with the Premier of Wazulu Natal in Ilembe. We also went to areas like Ichelimnyama. We also went to areas like Nduzuma as well as Umlazi, where we were issuing out those enabling documents. So it's something that we had to explain because a wrong perception was being created that Home Affairs could not be able to assist people. We were able to assist people. Remember, our own offices were sort of disturbed with the floods because part of our network infrastructure has to do with physical connections and cables. But within a space of a day, all of our offices were up and running with the exception of one which was affected by the flights. Even in that particular office, we sent out a mobile unit to go there and be able to assist people. So we're quite happy with the work that we have done there. Now what we are doing is that we are conducting mop-up operations with disaster uh, officials as well as local government officials to tell us if there are any other people who were left out in the process. But already, as I've said, 2,225 people that we interacted with and we have already assisted. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister of Home Affairs. And I'm hoping to have another conversation with you um, at some time during the course of the week or next week even about what you'll do about this particular system when it comes to rural communities. We know the infrastructure there doesn't allow them to have the network to be able to actually get the appointment done. But thank you very much for your time here on All Angles. That was uh, the Deputy Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Njabulo Nzuza.